All right, so we're gonna do the demo of the chronometer uh, slash clock in here. So first I'm gonna reset the code and we can see the chronometer starts to count up. So we have second, minutes, and hours. So the button on the left, S1, is used to pause and resume. So we are counting up here. If I push the button, the counting uh, pauses at this value and if I push it again it's gonna resume counting from that value you can see we have the chronometer um, uh, symbol means it is counting exclamation point means it is stopped so that's basically uh, the chronometer function let's look at the reset if we do long press on S1 it's gonna reset back to zero so that's the uh, reset usually after reset it stops it stays stop I can start it again by pushing this so that's pretty much is the chronometer function now let's look at how we can use this as a clock so basically the same counters that are counting second minutes and hours can become a clock and to do that to set the time we push s2 to fast forward to the time we want to set so I'm gonna set a time of 2.15. So let's do this. You can see it's going really fast uh, at this point. So that's one, two, 15. So that's exactly what could happen. You may exceed the time and you may exceed it by a few minutes, not just by one. That's why we have a rewind. So we don't wanna go the full range and back to 215 what we can do instead i'm gonna push s2 and when i do that it will fast forward but while holding this down i'm gonna push this now it goes backward and then i can go back to 215 so all right now i'm below that so so let's try to get 215 yeah very uh short clicks 215 so now i can just keep it running so that's basically why we have the rewind feature because you're trying to set the time and you can easily go past it so the rewind would help us uh, set this again so uh, that's pretty much it uh, um, otherwise you, you can pause it pause the clock and reset it because it's just basically the same chronometer uh, one little detail here is the colon is blinking every second and for the button, uh, we can add a small delay in the ISR so it doesn't bounce. So once I added the small delay, it works quite well. There's no bouncing, it just works pretty much every click. So that basically would be helpful to do. Otherwise the bounce with the bouncing is not gonna work exactly every time. All right, so that's pretty much is it for this demo.